be right just as I'm about to start. They're no, looking for us again. I knew I should have booked that ticket to Argentina. Yes, anyway, the producer and I are here. He's, uh, it's very warm in Brisbane at the moment. We had, I think, almost 37 degrees Celsius um, yesterday in certain parts of the state. I think it got to 35 around uh, around here. Was that yesterday or Sunday? I can't remember. What's, what is today's date? Tuesday. <laughs> Look, I lose track of, of all time. So today's video. Who has had the words, your hobby is a waste of time? Or in other words, I can say that I can certainly remember that my mother always said to me, your hobby is a waste of time. It's not productive. It will do nothing for you, you know, because she believed that I should be concentrating all my efforts on a career and my education. Well, I did do my education, but then I discovered women and ended up marrying my wife. So that went all out the window then. And uh, and that, but look, it's it's something that I guess a lot of particularly focused parents that are only thinking of. Um, well, my mother was very um, class conscious, coming from um, coming from an older background, and uh, from used to be a fairly prestigious family once, but now being reduced to. Um, shall we say, a landless group of um, knobs, if you'd like to call us that. But it's, uh, yeah, look, it's it's one of those things that, you know, you have parents that want to push their children into, into boxes and say, you know, forget your happiness. You know, you've only got to do this for 10 years. After 10 years, your life is everything that you want. Well, you know, at 18 being told that you've got to put another 10 years in to do, you know, higher education and pursue a career and uh, and do things um, isn't very appealing. And it's not for everybody. Not everybody can be a doctor or a solicitor or, uh, or some other, you know, just as prestigious sort of role. Not that I'm saying that they're all like that. I could have been an actor. No, actually, look, to be honest, my mother wanted me to be a Jesuit. She wanted me to go join the priesthood and go out there and strike the fear of God into the heathens that are uh, currently running around this world. So, I th yes, I'd have probably been very good, but I think I may have caused the Vatican probably a lot of headaches with my zealotness. But, uh, yeah, no, look, it's it's interesting that People want to try and tell you that, look, your hobby, pff, you know, your hobbies, there, there's nothing to your hobby. Your hobby's not in, you know, well, it's interesting to us, but other people view it and you try to tell them what role playing is. And um, immediately they go down the um, go down the S&M track thinking, oh, that's what role playing you're doing. No, 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 that's that's not what we're doing. And uh, it has some connotations. You know, or people think of, um, you know, management team meetings and you're told to role play a situation. You know, they were oh, dreadful wastes of time, in my opinion. But uh, obviously somebody's making money out of it. Yeah, but it's one of those things that what you find is or is not a waste of your time is really for yourself to determine. And it's not really for somebody else to tell you that your hobby or your interests are useless or have no value you know they have value to yourself as an individual and uh, that is really what what matters most so as long as your hobby is not going to put you in you know i guess dangerous situations or expose you to unwanted um, uh, adversarial type conflicts it's um it's really up to yourself to be as safe as you can with what you do and uh, and that's what it is but the other half of this video now that i've gotten i've sucked you in to have a look at what it is when i've got dnd is a waste of time it's amazing what you can do for clickbait 
But look, the second half of this video is I've, I've kept all my notes from my early role-playing games, and most of it primarily deals around Dungeons and & Dragons, and it would have been using this. We only knew it as Advanced Dungeons & Dragons back in those days. There was none of this business of First Ed, Second Ed, and, and all the other bits and pieces that were, were floating we're floating around today, you know, we're fifth ed now, but this was the edition that we had jumped onto. There was still basic and, um, you know, the little red books, the, uh, the red and blue and, you know, all those, all those others. I think I did have them. Uh, I've got some of them. I think I've shown them previously in some of my videos that I do have them. I sadly could not I've, well, I've lost a lot of stuff. Queensland tends to flood a lot. And uh, when I moved into the house that I'm currently in, I did not know it flooded. And uh, consequently, I still had a lot of my stuff sitting in storage boxes. And it, I lost so much. It was, it's, it's sad to think of it. But the other half of this video is all about all the stuff that I've collected. And I'm, I'm, there's a lot of stuff there dealing with um, uh, Queensland role players and Eldoria, which has um, originally it was Dark Star Gaming, I think was the name, of the business that they called themselves. And it was a very, very well run enterprise back then. When you think that, like, for instance, QRP, I think, started in 1982. And uh, we would have, we had a. Uh, the uh, Keith and uh, I think uh, who was it Keith Russell and um, oh bugger me I've forgotten the other chap's name now oh god this is dreadful but uh, they had um, you know uh, Eldoria was their desi design and they had a campaign concept and they were developing the world and we had quite a few individual dungeon masters running uh, sessions within the world of Eldoria. And we actually had, um, I think, I can't remember, it might have been monthly, it may have been more than that, but I can certainly remember meeting regularly with all the other game masters and we would go to, Greg, Greg, that's who it was. We would go to, uh, we'd go to his home, uh, I think on the most part, and uh, each of us as, as game masters would say, oh look, this is what we're doing. And uh, because we were, I think they were trying to run a uh, you know campaign style system. They really didn't want sort of characters to be, you know, running up the levels really high. They were, you know, don't, you know, it was sort of like only give out some some magic items and look at these sorts. You know, there was not quite limiting, but you know, it was sort of they were trying to direct the world because they had, you know, secrets, you know, um, secrets within the game. I guess that were only known to you know certain people and we had oh, what was it Danacons Danacrons cube I think was one of the um, was one of the interesting little things that were in there so it was in the infancy of uh, of role playing here in Brisbane and you'll find within the um, with what's coming up next for instance with our tournaments we'd run tournaments and it was very interesting looking back on looking back on those days but yeah so yeah i had that um and then there's some of the uh, i had kept some of the newspapers community new newspapers from qut that had um keith's um quest of the claw cartoon which by the way you can get on drive through so i highly recommend that if you want to uh if you're an old Brisbane person and you um, can remember the uh, QR Quirp, who was our mascot for the, um, you know, icon for the, uh, for the club, uh, go and have a look at them. They're quite, they're quite cheap, and uh, you can pick that up. But uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm rambling. Let's get on to the rest of the video. Now I did mention a while ago about keeping old campaign materials and uh, and stuff for role-playing games. Well, this box here has 
all my stuff that I've kept for D&D and this stretches back to very much the 70s, late 70s and I guess up until when I, well I haven't really stopped but this really I guess covers the sort of, for me, the um, the golden age of role playing which for me was the late 70s into probably the mid 80s and uh, that's when I got the most enjoyment out of what I was doing but look what's sitting in this box so this stuff here is fairly um, fairly modern I've uh, been going through and getting out of the white dwarfs so I've got a collection here I've started to do the uh, copying my white dwarfs and uh, printing it so that I could have all the old D and D material. So that was what I had there. Then I've got all sorts of, you know, there's nothing better than having your adventurers playing on an island with, you know, you can always really contain them in that regard. So, you know, I tend to be fairly. Um, so this is a non. Um, Eldoria um, set of works. So I've actually done an iron line, a, a, a timeline, and then I've got adventures and all sorts of things. So you can see a lot of my stuff. Sadly, a lot of my stuff, which because uh, once again it was early days of um, computers and that, and uh, as you can see by the dot matrix style. Maybe not with this, but some of the older work you'll see that uh, the old dot matrix printer was the uh, was the go-to back then. Uh, and yes, and sadly, of course, because I had everything on floppy disks and uh, and that, which uh, you know the old what is it five and three quarters and three and a half inch floppies, and uh, they all. I can't be read anymore and I have no idea I must have tossed them in a peak because normally I wouldn't have done that but yeah anyway so what have we got here this is um, I ran some uh, tournaments throughout the 80s and uh, was also a game master for a number of them that we used to run at the Queensland role players this one here was done at um, uh, was done at uh, Briscon, oh, there, there it is, Briscon in 1987, and uh, I wrote that scenario. I actually even got a um, an award for best designer, so that was uh, that was really good. Uh, so that was primarily my work. Um, anything else that was there, the uh, the other author, who sadly I no longer no longer get on with. <laughs> it's sad, isn't it? But look, you can see how badly the uh, the uh, the old dot matrixing. He was the person who was rather savvy with putting together all the, uh, I guess the uh, artistry and that because you know he literally supplied all these dungeon tiles which we used at the time. So uh, yeah. So anyway, that was that was uh, a tournament. Good question. How did we? Because we used to score the tournaments at the end too, from memory. So we had the characters. Oh yeah, look, I'd even started to write an additional set of um, materials for the uh, for following adventures. But I think '87, yeah, because '88 was when I had my first breakdown and um, my first battle with um, mental health. So yeah, so we had a point system so you solving certain things and that would earn you the points and when you're running a uh, a uh, a tournament with multiple people or oh, sorry multiple game masters uh, it was you know who was the best party well how they managed to solve things and and pursue so what else have we got here so these are all these others i um went about and uh, a lot of Keith's early stuff for uh, uh, for Eldoria, so I uh, typed typed up all the handwritten notes that uh, that Keith had provided, and uh, was able to uh, nicely put that together with a 
you know, his art style was very good. Um, I don't see a lot of material from him these days. I'm just, uh, I uh, must ask him next time I see him as to uh, whether or not he's got issues with um, being able to draw these days. I don't know. But yeah, Tuma Rusto was one of the um, tournament dungeons, I believe, that we had. Uh, whether or not I've got anything here <laughs> relating to it, I don't know. But yeah, anyway, so that was Tuma Rusto. And again, we had our... Keith had a very definitive style of drawing. Drawing his... Um, his dungeons and villages and stuff, and I must admit that um, I'm a dreadful plagiarist, and I will say that Keith has inspired me in regards to the way how I do my um, adventure drawing and stuff. So this was... So what was this one? Fay Castle. So, uh, again, you know, old one, Blade's Lair. Now that was, you know, the, the dungeon that nobody could survive from, which... Uh, uh, yeah, it was very, very interesting. I think my group did, um, but uh, yeah, so that that was interesting. That that one there, and then Dark Secrets of Fair Castle Valley. Yeah, so I've as I said, and then this is the one that I I did a there's a couple of versions of this, and I write this back in 1988, Islands of Herath. Um, and that was one of the deities in Eldoria and uh, I think this, yeah, so this version here is just all plain text this one here that I produced, I actually inserted uh, I was just starting to learn I could insert artwork and all sorts of things and of course these are all being pinched from other publications so this is not a published uh, um, thing so I've just done this for my own personal use so lots of Lots of stuff there. Then what have we got? We've got, um, yeah, so these are the hand, handwritten stuff. This is a, um, this is the Bars of Fable. I think, yeah, this was Nigel Bell. I thought I could see Nigel's handwriting here. So that was that, um, which has got, I must probably get around to typing this one up too, I think. But uh, sadly, uh, good old Microsoft of stopped me from being able to use my old uh, office I think 97 that just shows you how old it is but yeah so this was the material for the tomb of Viratath now I think I did mention uh, in another video about the tomb of tomb of Viratath and uh, these were the um, you know, bits of artwork that uh, for the dungeon then these were the uh, information in regards to uh, so, yeah, so that was 1986 yes my people actually actually succeeded and uh, and won that event because uh, let me see if I can find it now, I know that I've wandered off, and you'll hear me talking from a huge distance, but uh, the... So I'm back. This was the end part for the Tomb of Veritath, and uh, the thing was is that it was trapped and it was only if when we finally got to the final destination and uh, one of us said check for traps apparently we were the first group to do so otherwise I don't think we were the first people to get to the final location but I think we were certainly one of the more successful ones and of course it came with I think there were coins and uh, other bits and pieces gold coins I think yeah and then this was the uh, actual uh, medallion that we that we got for the uh, for the day for the I think there were six of us but yeah they you know 
things that you don't see I don't know whether or not too many places or um, or community do these sorts of things um, so look if you have been to a uh, you know played in adventurers or tournaments where they actually you know do more than just a uh, simple you know here's a trophy for you I'd be interested now this are ah, right so this was the material that was sent to us for the uh, so it says your characters and then it lists who they were so that was that was quite good so I obviously kept my notes yeah so anyway that was that was the material that was sent so quite happy quite happy to still have that then yeah so this was my other version hey there we go this is back in the days of the uh, the old dot matrix so that was my first version of the uh, of my I guess my opus yeah I know it doesn't matter look oh, yeah, it's there so I've got all sorts of things I've got um, another one of these Temple of Graal which was um, is this done by oh, Tim Barker and uh, Russell Proctor so uh, 1982 this one was so yeah so it's disappointing that yeah I, I, you know I've now got to take out like a you don't you used to be able to buy like education packages for Microsoft Office but now the cunning bastards have made you have to subscribe and uh, that just really annoys me so these must have been the characters for some adventure along the along the way but these were the Queensland roleplay uh, adventure sheets or oh, sorry um, yeah character sheets sorry so that was so there we go Queensland roleplayers was founded in 1982 my goodness yeah so that was yeah so that was uh, yeah all sorts of things that we used to do what do we got here another another looks like Castle Foxhaven so this is one of Nigel's um, bits of work so that's still there then when Keith was uh, working for QUT he did a, um, a series of cartoons based on our logo and uh, I've still got the, uh, the original clippings but not all of them so uh, I think I've only got about I think six one two three four five yes yeah, so I've only got five five of the twelve or five of the eleven I can't remember how many there were but uh, and that was the university's community newspaper that they printed Keith's um, cartoon in and that was you know I've kept them I haven't thrown them because you know for me they're just you know um, memories memories from the past and I like to keep them because there were good times uh, even though there were also some you know un unpleasant um, times as well but uh, yeah so my style of uh, drawing was there so as you can see I've uh, sort of copied um, Keith style but yeah anyway as I said I never throw anything out I keep everything then I've got oh, so much old material here dealing with um, dealing with the days of um, Eldoria so I've kept all kept all the notes for the gods oh, there we go jungles of Pokar all sorts of bits and pieces so you know I've got, got copies of some of the stuff Nigel's done I've done um, a lot of Keith's notes I've got copies thereof that he's provided for me over time so that was you know again I never I never throw anything I always keep everything that I've uh, had the pleasure of doing so oh there we go that's the original for Tomb of Rousteau so uh, yep there's that and then I've got a whole heap of my own um, you know, handwritten notes and dungeon material 
and uh, and stuff like that. I know that at one stage I was doing work, I was in the process of uh, dealing with Keith wanting to do something for the um, elves in Lazeria and uh, I did quite a bit of quite a bit of background notes um, to create the culture and everything but uh, that's right, Keith supplied me his some information with regard to Doomstborn and all sorts of things. That was, um, I can't remember when that was. Yeah, who knows. The um, Queensland role players, we had the behind the GM screen. And uh, out of all of them, I don't know why I've got so few. Ah, oh, I'd have lost them in flooding. But uh, these were were quite... Yeah, it was the club's club's magazine, and uh, I will say that uh, I was the person who forced that one to come into existence because I turned, I created a uh, magazine called the Ma called the magazine, and it covered a lot of material uh, which I took to the club, and uh, from that uh, they decided that they'd then do one themselves. So, yeah, so, well, that's my memory of it anyway. So, what else have we got? Lots of, got lots of copies of artwork from Keith's time. So, yeah, that was more, once again, Eldoria was the main one that we ran. So I've got all sorts of, as I said, I never throw anything out. Maps. This is in here. Oh yeah, character sheets, character material from adventures that I ran for people. Um, then we had what's this Nemesis? That was another club, another club tournament which was in 1983. Um, more, more bits and pieces. As I said, you never. Never ever throw any of your material out because you just never know when it might actually come in useful. Oh, there we go. They missed an L on my name, but that's fine. We, uh, oh yeah, they were Fall of the House Falcon. That was a, uh, a, um, I guess a live action role play thing that was run. And I got to play, I can't remember who did I play. I played Corgus, High Priest of Ormosi, of the Ormosian Church. So got to play a bit of a pompous ass. So uh, yeah, but anyway, that was kept all of that material. Then yeah, these are all the uh, original notes that we had in regards to the gods. And as you see, that's not as extensive as what's been written now, but you know, still, still good for its time. More character sheets, more dungeons, another. What's this? Another copy of the. Uh... Oh, here you go. So we actually had um, all sorts of bits and pieces. That was this tournament guide. So we had an outline where players would do things. So, but yeah. Anyway, that was that was that. And what else have I got here? Pull this out of the way a bit. Yeah, character sheets and portraits and so many bits and pieces from my early days. Some more bits and pieces. That's, oh, there's my 1987 I wrote the island. So these are all my handwritten notes that I'd uh, QRP original character sheets. Oh, I got them somewhere. I don't think they're in amongst this lot. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, look, that's... I just like to, um, I never throw anything out because every now and again somebody will say something and I'll go back and go, oh, I really would like to, you know, go back and have a look and try and remember some of the things because, uh, you know, life is, life is what it is. And uh, for me, the early days of role playing were, um, were a lot of fun. They were a lot of fun, and uh, I guess it's as we start to get older and uh, 
you know, clashes of personalities and all sorts of things like that does sometimes drive many of us away. And uh, and I think, as I said, in 1988, I had my first I had my first mental breakdown, and uh, sadly, uh, people were very um, wouldn't say hostile, but they were not forgiving of people who had uh, mental illnesses uh, back then, and consequently, uh, yeah, I was ostracised for a long time. So, but anyway, things changed. I moved from being a role player to a to a miniature player, and uh, from miniatures on to board games. But you know, I've kept my hobbies for role playing and all my miniatures. Still got everything. You know, I don't believe in throwing anything away because uh, all games, no matter what its aspect is, tends to be cyclic. You know, role playing might be really popular at the moment, but board games are just as popular. Miniatures, you know, it comes through in a cycle and depends what's really popular in your particular area of of the world as to what finds itself a uh, finds itself as the premier system if we'd like to call it that but anyway look thank you very much for for watching as i said um have fun until next time signing off the honorable john